Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel, guys. Before we get started, as always, please hit the subscribe button if you're new. It's important to show your support to any YouTube channel you watch by subscribing. And also check out the Patreon community. As you've said before, this is an independent channel that is funded primarily through Patreon. Um, you can also get some rewards back if you join the Patreon community, whether it's just basic access, advanced viewing to videos, or even a monthly contest where you could win prizes, like the tool that we're gonna be reviewing in this particular video, for example. And you get access to me if you wanna message me with your detailing questions on products or processes, in particular around machine polishing your car, like we're gonna be covering in this video. So um, we're gonna try and shoot this in a live way, guys. So check out the Patreon community. Today's video, we are looking at what I sometimes refer to as budget polishers, starting polishers, entry level polishers. Why do I use that word? Well, let's cut to the chase. It's the price point. This polisher here, guys, is called the DA8 from Into Detailing. What does the 8 stand for? It stands for the offset. So if I was to take this plate off, you would see a free spinning bearing offset on the main axle. Um, that's called the orbit or the throw. So it has an eight mil throw. So it's a, not an aggressive machine. You get long throw machines with 12 millimeter offset, 15 millimeter offset, 21 millimeter offset. This has an eight millimeter offset and a 900 watt motor and it costs a hundred pounds. You can't use discount codes with this machine because it's already discounted. Now, the cool thing about this machine, guys, one of the cool features that make this, a, apart from the price, that make this a desirable starting tool, is it comes with two plates. So you haven't got to go messing around looking at plate sizes and fitment sizes. These are, however, these are 5 sixteenths, they refer to, the size of the fitment. So it's a much smaller little spindle on here. Now, I put the 75 mil plate on there just to show you. So you'll use the 75 mil plate when you wanna hit more curvy, tighter areas. For example, a front bumper, uh, maybe a B pillar or a C pillar, you know, rear quarter sections, um, lower skirts and all that sort of stuff where a big pad is not gonna be able to get into the recesses and it's gonna stall out. So it's quite important. Um, now the downside is obviously of just having one tool is that you have to change the plates and it comes with a little spanner. And I will show you what's involved in changing the plates. You put the spanner in till it bites on the little nut inside. It's bitten and then you unscrew the, um, the plate. You make sure you keep the plastic washer with this particular plate. Okay, and then you can swap over. There's a little rubber. See that little black thing? That's a little rubber guard to keep the thread safe. So I'll swap that back over onto that machine. And I'll just get this in the spindle, turn it, that's it. It'll just spin till it tightens. Then you're gonna to need to put the spanner in, to lock the spanner off, which is done, and then turn the, ideally you wanna set this tool down, <laughs> but that is locked in now. So it's relatively easy to do, but you don't wanna keep doing that every five minutes. So. Think about how you're gonna polish the machine, get your big areas done first, then maybe swap the plate around once and then do all your tighter areas. Or alternatively, you get two machines. Let's go through the rest of the specs on this machine, guys. So it's an eight mil throw dual action polish. It's about 100 pounds. It's 900 watts, so it's got quite a powerful motor in it, although it's hard to translate motor power output directly to torque. Comes with a 12 month um, manufacturer warranty. Supports 125 mil plate and 75 mil plate, it comes with those. It's not brushless, so it uses brushes, and you get a spare set of brushes in it if you're using the machine a lot. The brushes eventually wear out, and they're tiny little things that are very cheap, but you've got a spare set in there if you need to replace those later on. Um, go and Google how to replace brushes. There was a good article in Pro Details magazine on how to do it. Speed range, very important. Lowest operating speed, 25. 100 or 2,500 OPMs per minute. Nice and slow, so you're gonna spread your polish at that low speed, typically. And then you can crank up to a maximum of 6,800 OPMs, which is fast. When you start running at that sort of speed, more likely to dry your product out a little bit, warm your pads up a bit too much. So I, I always find, you know, the question I get asked, how fast should I run my machine polisher? I find you don't want it to stall. When you drop your speed down, eventually you'll start seeing it stall really easily when you go over little um, 
recesses and bumps. So you want to crank it up to the point where you can't easily make it stall. And typically on these machines which run at one to, one to six, that is somewhere between four and five is that sweet spot. If you're running it too fast and you're seeing your product dry up and dust up on you, then slow it down a bit. Find your sweet spot, start at around about four and a half um, on the speed dial when you're cutting. Uh, cable length six meters and I'm not sure if I said that it weighs 2.3 kilos it's also CE certified so it should be relatively safe what are the key features of this particular tool guys over a normal kind of 8 mil polisher um, well you have an integrated rubber bale which is an improvement it comes with a D handle which is like a big U that clamps on either side of this machine You'll see some people like those. The problem with them is they get in the way when you're trying to go under the wing mirrors and you've got this big D handle. So a lot of times you want to keep the form of the machine low. So I don't think, I think you're better off with no D handle with an integrated bale, but you've got the option there. The key thing is the integrated bale is now rubberized. So you're going to be 99% of the time just holding the tool with the rubber bale. That's an improvement. What else guys? Well, it's a slightly slimmer body so you can actually get your hands around the tool and hold it a bit better which is not significant, but it probably helps a little bit. Most of the time the tool's gonna to be set down when you're working horizontally. When you're working vertically, then it's nice to be able to get your hands around it. Like, like the uh, DAS 6 Pro, which is the, the model that I used to use, and I think into detailing used to sell. It has the speed dial under, tucked away under there, under the cable, which is a feature that I think could be improved. I would just prefer to see it somewhere on the top where it's not tucked away, personally. Um, whenever you buy a polisher, guys, the first thing you should do is check the gap between the free spinning plate and the shroud and make sure that the plate is not wobbling like this. In other words, the bearing is mounted into the machine, to the axle straight, and there's no play in the bearing. And also just move the plate and see if you can make it go click, 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 you know, and rattle around, it shouldn't. So that, that is the counterweight moving, but there's no play on this, look. Can you see that? So that's a good thing. So it should be, you know, it should be solid to use. Um, also, if it's not, if there's wobble, it's more likely to rub against the shroud. There's quite a big gap between the shroud and the plate on this machine. So there's gonna be no support of the plate with the shroud, which is common on the eight mil throw machines. So they tend to spin out and not stall so well, which is good. Um, what is another key thing on this, guys? Uh, integrated bale, slim line, rubberized handle. Why have I put the word vents? Oh, vents. The main plate has got venting in it, so the airflow, the machine draws air in through the back, over the motor to keep the motor cool, down through the gearing, you know, and the axle to keep it all cool, and then blows out vents through the through here to keep your pad temperatures down as well, so you don't overheat your pads. That's another improvement over its predecessor, or, or not its predecessor, but over its kind of, uh, over the DAS6 Pro. Now the DAS6 Pro is a great machine, guys. It was something that I bought for the same reasons that you might be looking to buy one of these, just like a backup polisher, a nice entry level, affordable machine polisher that works well. The improvements on this over the DAS6 Pro are minor things, um, they are minor things, and the DAS6 Pro is also a great starting tool as well. I qualified this tool, Imran sent me one about six months ago, not for a review, but to, to ask me the question, should he go ahead and stock it? Is it worth stocking? After testing it for a few weeks, my answer was yes. The tool is solid, there's no creaks, it gets the old hand test, we'll work my way around it, see if there's any loose, rattly things. I'll turn it off and on about 500 different times, see if this thing will ever break down. Pull on this cable, tread on it, see if you can make a loose connection for where it's pincered in under here. It was okay. Um, and it just has a couple of those improvements I've talked about with the ergonomics, with the cooling, and with the slim nine nature of the tool that I think I said to him around is worth having, and the power as well, guys. So what we're gonna do now, that's all the specs. What we're gonna do now, we'll try and shoot this video in one take live, which is very difficult, and you won't see many people doing it, is go straight into polishing. Now, this is the first time I've actually used this machine 
Okay, you can see me taking all the stuff off of it. What I'm going to do is switch over to potato cam because <laughs> um, that's the easiest way to shoot live. Right, so we're off here. Well, I've got my power already down there that I nearly tripped over on. <laughs> so that's connected there. What I'm going to do, if I pan the camera around this way, you can now see the car and if I before we get started I'm just going to show you the type of paintwork that we're dealing with um, now this this car has been washed and you can see that we have you see that like peel that's from where I've aggressively clayed this with a clay cloth and it's just it's like kind of sanding on the paint you've got the high spots have kind of gone hazy, so you can see the peel texture more. So we need polishing is going to sort all that out. And it's also swirly, guys. Can you see all the swirls? If I bring the, let the camera sort itself out on the focus. There we go. Covered in swirls. And it's covered in little paint chips as well, which unfortunately, for old paint, there's nothing really you can do. Bonnet probably needs to be repainted at some point. I mean, look how bad the paint is. I'll show you this. Covered. Covered in swirl. So there we go. So it's a nice, it's a nice thing to demo on. What else do you need when you're machine polishing, guys? We well, need a good collection of microfiber cloths that I have here. That's just these are just standard Terry's. If you want to get them, buy something like the uh, rag company edgeless 300s or 365s are very similar or if you're working on a car with really nice paint or a high-end car or a car with soft paint then use these open pile cloths from into detailing they're so cheap and they're lovely uh, and they're just great but I can't get them out because <laughs> there's not enough gap to get the box out so never mind and I'm just going to be doing one set of demoing let's set the camera down over here you can see the potato can, the infamous potato can. Before we switch over to potato can, guys, that's the cloths. I'm also using Koch Chemi Seal as panel wipe. Think of this as 99% proof IPA, although it isn't quite like that. It's, it's alcohol solvent based primarily, so it's, it's virtually 99% proof IPA. Do not use this neat. Knock it down at least one to three, one to four. Think of it when you do your maths as 99% proof IPA and don't go above 30% of this to water. So use about 25% of this, 2 to 3%, 2% Surfex HD or APC, and the rest distilled water. And then you have a very affordable and effective panel wipe, which is absolutely ideal holding the camera absolutely ideal for just little inspection wipe downs and stuff like that if you're putting a ceramic coating down would you want to use a more expensive degreaser like Gion Prep or um, G Technic C2 no not C2 G Technic panel wipe you can do or built hand cleanser fluid I've talked about that um, it might well be worth doing but just for little inspection wipe downs I use that product in terms of abrasives you see there Koch Chemi, uh, let me just get the viewfinder so I can see what you're seeing. Koch Chemi H9, F6, M3, all you need, finished. You can, I sometimes also recommend the Shoal Concepts. Some people prefer them. So you could use S2 Black, S20, or an S40 as your combo. These three combos I'm starting with the heavy cutting, medium cutting, finishing polish and the medium cut you can also use a single stage polishing which means one hit one pad one product which a lot of people like now pad choice guys pad choice i would recommend in flex pads and you just need these two pads this is your cutting pad it's the flex purple pad it's an expensive pad you can use hex logic if you want to save yourself i don't know what four quid or something I would recommend you don't because this pad lasts a lot longer. This pad has been used many times. You can see it's in pretty good shape. I would recommend you get two of these. These will fit the 125 mil plates. I think they're, they're 140 mil spec 
pad sizes, but they fit 125 mil plates. And I'd recommend you also get two orange pads from Fle the Flex pads, which are polishing pads. So cutting pads, polishing pads. These you'll use with higher cut products on harder paint. These you will use with finishing products on, you know, on softer paints or on harder paints really. Now, if you want to single stage, which of these two should you use? If you're single staging on hard German paint, then use the purple. If you're single staging on soft Japanese paint that's, that can mar up if you're using too stiff a pad, then you could use the orange. It's worth saying though, it's very rare that this purple pad will put in mar marring. So this is also suitable for soft paint. This is one of the reasons I recommend this pad. It cuts well, it's got a good amount of stiffness and density, but you can also, you know, it's not overly coarse and it's not gonna mar up very soft paints. They're the only two pads you need. How many of these should I get, John? Well, a minimum of two, I've talked about that before, and a minimum of two so you can swap around, I'd say. And they're probably, on average, about four. It does start getting very expensive. And of course, you can buy the 75 mil purple and orange equivalents for your small plates, and they're all available from interdetailing. You are nearly ready to go. The only other thing is the subject of tape, into detailing again, sell this tape, it's called SP80. It's a low tack tape and that's it. And it's reasonably well priced. <laughs> that's it, uh, SP80, green, the green tape. How do you use tape? What is tape used for? It's used, mask up any rubbers that like, if you look down here, you can just see it, can't you? The edge of the car, like all this is rubber. If you don't tape up this rubber and you just polish up tight against that rubber, you're gonna hit it and rubber has all the dirt on the top of it. And you know, you'll pull debris and grease out of the gap as well into the pad and grit and you'll scratch your paint and maybe put in like pigtails and stuff like that. So there's an example of something that you would wanna tape up so that you're actually, the tape is sealing in that horrible bit of rubber. So it stops you pulling dirt out of the, there, also stops you cramming polish in the rubber as well. You can also use tape to protect things, anything you want to protect. Um, for example, if you're polishing under the, under the wing mirror, you might want to get a thicker tape and just like, some people will use a bit of, um, you know, paper and tape it all on and stuff like that. You might be worried about the plate bashing against something so you could tape it up. So it's protection, and stopping you cram and pull dirt out of things, primarily. Um, you can't see me. There's no right or wrong. Some guys will mask up the entire car, cut out bits of paper to the same size as the glass and put that on. If someone does that, that shows that they really don't, they're really managing their polish and just exposing the paint surfaces. So there's no right or wrong, but it takes a lot of time. If you're careful with your polish and how you manage it, you don't need to use that much tape and you don't need to cover things up. Good compromise, put a towel, an old towel on the glass because when you're polishing a front bumper, for example, when you get to this edge, you can splatter sling polish all over your windscreen wipers. Little dots of it can go everywhere. And if you don't get it off, it dries. And the next day it's a nightmare to get off. It doesn't dissolve once, once it's dried. So manage your polish however you like. There's some little tips. By talking about it, you can sort of think about it and decide. Let's go straight into polishing. What I'm gonna do is, I have really bad paintwork here. I've already showed it to you. But what I'm gonna do is just use a soft orange pad, which I'm gonna get here. There's one of my oranges. Might as well get one of used already. So mounting the plate, always best put your pad down in your hand and look down, look down on the polisher when you're putting the um, pad on. So there's a little bit of a gap here. So by looking down, I can measure the gap. You can see when I spin it, that if it was wobbling, the black line was wobbling, I haven't got it straight. Um, when you're tearing these off, be careful, don't grab the pad, try and get your fingers on the Velcro so that you're not pulling against the Velcro, because you can wear the pads out by ripping them off quickly, especially when they're hot and the glue's weakened. And you can damage the pad that way, so just take them off a little bit cautiously. So you can see this mounts up pretty well to this pad. It's, it's, it's a bit of old polish in there, probably didn't do the greatest job of cleaning. Whenever you see old polish in your pad, you turn it on, you're going to get a bit of dust coming out of it. So never be afraid to turn a pad on, uh, turn your machine on, 
let's turn the speed right down and just give it a bang. It's interesting. Okay, now we've got this on speed one. We're going to go in with a mid range compound rather than the finishing polish. So, this is almost like a one stage. I could use the heavy cut and the purple and the finishing polish with the orange, but I'm choosing to use the single stage. Let's call it F6, even though it says F5 on the bottle, that will confuse it. But I'm using H9, F6, and M3, the latest range of polishes from Koch. Right, I've already shaken the hell out of that bottle, but give it a good shake. Abrasives, modern abrasives now are pretty well suspended, so you don't see like the old ones where the sort of solution, the carrier goes to the top and all the abrasives stick to the bottom and you have to shake the hell out of it. They're quite well suspended, um, the abrasives in these formulations. Give it a shake anyway. Uh, guys, first, first run I've put four dots down and I'm gonna switch over to potato can now. Oh, this is a nightmare trying to do this on the fly. Okay, here we go. Switching to potato. Ah! I'm gonna run out of battery on this, but I'll position it down on the car, just so you've got another view there. Okay, let's put this right in the corner. There we go. Okay, so potato can. Here we go. Um, might wanna wear ear defenders. You might wanna wear a mask if you wanna. Um, you might also want to wear clothing that doesn't have zips. You might want to take jewellery off. You can do whatever you like, guys. Um, it's Doing detailing videos becomes spot the mistakes. Um, reality is we're all going to do things slightly differently and to different standards. So what I'm going to do is pop that there. This is rubberized feet, so don't worry. So now you can see exactly what I'm doing, guys. This pad's bone dry, so... Let's just get this pad primed, okay? It's because it's, it's our first set. So I'm just gonna turn this on. Okay, I'm just gonna put a little bit more polish on because it sort of sucked that polish up a little bit. I'll do sort of three more dots now. So I've done my first priming with four. And you could do three or four smaller ones. You just don't wanna overload your working area and guys the two by two starting working area is a really sensible size i've just put the polish the cable on my shoulder and i'm ready to spread the polish that's the first thing you always do two by two area you can just give it a few dabs first of all so you've got a bit more polish you know spread out over the panel and then we're going to create a film okay now the risk of doing any damage or slinging any product is pretty much gone. And I've got a good amount of product there. Um, okay, now we're gonna crank this machine up. I've talked about speeds earlier on, so we're gonna go at four and a half thousand guys, and we're gonna polish for about two minutes, something like that. And you'll be able to see exactly how good or how bad the results are. I haven't covered my glass, so you might see some splatter earlier on, which, which anything that goes wrong is a good demonstration of why I said you should do it. But here we go. One thing straight away, I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. It feels, feels like it's going, it's going some. That's faster than I'm normally used to. So I've just gone one little click below four. Um, I'm not putting much pressure down, guys. What some of you are gonna to wanna to see is the stall. So let me get a little marker pen, hold on. So if we put a little line here, you can see the stall. Ah. Okay, here we go. That should be a better speed. Over the edge, Charlie. 
So that is four passes. Normally I would probably do five or six to whenever it feels right, but you know, you get the idea and we're on a timer with the video. So now we take a clean cloth. These cloths are all folded nicely. Pinch the open end, the end with four open bits, so it can't go anywhere. Put it flat on the panel and just buff in gentle little circles like that. Look how easy that polish comes up. <laughs> Look how easy it is. It's, okay. I mean, half the battle is just finding a product that you don't encounter any issues or problems with. But when you've got a nice clean microfiber cloth, a nice easy polish to work with, look at that. How easy was that? Now I just keep that cloth. I remember I've done that side so I can flip over. That's my new side. Now, if you're inspecting, you would probably now want to use the clean side and some panel wipe. In fact, let's do it. Let's do it so we get a proper thing going on here, okay? So we take a bit of our panel wipe. You can be careful, you could spray it onto the cloth if you want. Don't, you, this is, the problem with this is it's probably gonna put quite a lot down, but anyway, there we go, fine. And then, again, we're just gonna buff this really gently with the clean side. Nice and cool today, which helps. We wanna buff this before it flashes. Okay. So cool. So temperature, 12 degrees. So I think below, is it 10 degrees or five degrees? Even the IPA will struggle to flash out. A lot slower today. You would wanna make sure it's all flashed and then you take your inspection light. And if you have a look here, guys, um, you can see, oh, well, we've got the right light. You can see now that that paint is just looking really nice. It's quite soft, so it's responded really well to the polishing. And just to show you the difference, yes, this GoPro can pick up swirls. Look, unpolished, boom. <laughs> So you can see all of that clay bar marring, horrible stuff, looks like a holograms, doesn't it? You can see the swirls. Let's pull that back there, look. And then we go to where we've polished. That is why polishing is great. Yes, um, you know, we're gonna see stuff in this paintwork, although I'm struggling to see any. Uh, if I come up here, I can see a deep scratch here that you'll probably see on the camera if I move around. Yeah, there, you can see it going up and down where that light is. Um, so doing that hasn't created perfection, but we've done nothing complicated there. We've done nothing that you cannot do. And we've just suddenly improved our paintwork from like plastered in defects to now looking glossy and damage free. And all I would do guys is I would now say right do i want to go again i can see a scratch here i can see another scratch here they're quite deep if i'm going to take those scratches out then i've got to be consistent really you know and things start going through my head or do i just say right that's it i go on now and now i work on that area i work on that area i work on this area this area this area nine sections and then i onto the wing you know whatever however you want to work your way around the car and then you're done that one set will give you the maximum efficiency of improvement with this nice soft paint. Now, it depends about levels. The ultimate results are in a two stage where you take your heavy cutting compound and your finishing polish. That can become the most efficient. It's a different kettle of fish on hard paintwork that's old and swirled. Um, this paintwork, like I say, is soft and it's responding really nice to the polish. The downside is it will probably swirl up quicker than hard paint. So I tend to like paintwork that needs a heavy cut and a finish. The two stage is where it's at. Um, that second refining polish with a nice finishing polish and a soft pad, it's always a pleasure to do that. Um, gives you an idea though, guys, of the level of improvement that you can get from one you know, this paint here, which is all swirled up and hologrammed to paintwork, which is, you know, that paintwork is about at least 95 finger in the wind percent corrected, or maybe not, I'm standing here seeing a few more marks on it. But if I went through and did this on the entire car, did a final wipe down with a nice soft cloth, put a wax on top, do roll my car out of the garage in the right light, 
the car will be transformed and that is a really rewarding thing to do there is no right or no wrong main thing is when you're doing it you don't want them to make mistakes so go and watch my video on avoiding mistakes when polishing uh, one of the things supposed to be a review of this polisher this polisher is really really powerful it took me by surprise on speed i think i was on four and a half or five it was like ooh, really powerful so i cranked it down just below four which seemed ideal for this soft paint i could maybe crank it up to four and a half if the paintwork was harder it's nice to have all that capability there and not use it this is a great machine if you're starting guys really great machine it's also a good backup machine if you're a poly if you're a professional detailer and one of your main tools breaks you will be able to do anything on this tool it just might take you a little bit longer than some of these other options here these long throw combos that we're going to talk about in another video that's the compromise the price of the unit 99 pounds you can own this and in two or three years time you can sell them for about 70 quid they're so popular with so much demand for them um, which is exactly what i did with my dad six pro in fact i had it for about five years and sold it for not much less than what i paid for it so much demand for them so there we go thank you very much for watching any questions you got on polishing stick them in the video this is the dad six this is the this is the da8 sorry not the dad six pro the da8 from into detailing and we're going to be doing a giveaway on all of these polishers for my patrons so if you want to support the channel check out the link in patreon thank you very much for watching this has been a cross video <laughs> from full-on professional cam which has probably run out of battery by now is it yeah that's gone the battery on that's gone switching over to potato cam first of its kind see you soon Where was I when